Ghost Cult Magazine welcomes in Will Ramos of Lorna Shore. How are you doing today, man? Good. How are you doing, man? I'm great. Uh, everything is coming up. Will, you are having an amazing time, I hope, with all the good news going on. New band, new album, EP, a lot of cool stuff happening. Oh, hell yeah, man. A lot of great stuff. Nice. I love to see smiling ass people first thing in the day. This makes me happy. You do get, you, get, you know, you get your bands who never break character. They just grim and scowl all the time. And I'm glad that's oh, not true. Yeah, nobody likes that. I mean, I mean, it's cool. You know, you could be the cool guy, but maybe you could just you know, be a fucking normal person. You know, I don't know. Be a normal person. You can just be, be a normal free. person, dude. Normal you know, person. whatever. Be a, be free. Be fra- fly your freak flag, but also be a normal person. It, it's a beautiful uh, day outside. There's no reason to be glum. You know exactly, what I'm saying? Exactly. Exactly. It's been a glum time in the world. I'm I'm very aware of that. A lot of people have struggled and stuff. And I hope that you're well, your family's in one piece, the band, all their fans and friends are okay. Because it has been tough. Tough for oh, all absolutely, business. man. Absolutely. I hope the same for you as well, by the way. You know. We are plugging away here at Ghost Cult, myself and our whole global team. We're we're hanging in there the best we can. We just just like you guys, we double down on the crisis and we just was like whatever we're doing let's do it triply hard and go go hard and go home and it seems like you might as well. as well with all the free time you know everyone's dying for something and everyone's like give me something to do you know it's like i know a lot, a lot of people have been doing a lot of creative outlets and stuff so now's the time it's like 100 percent jump into it dude i right fully on. i fully support this for you yeah of course and anybody who couldn't I know a bunch of bands and creative people who are like, I can't work at all. I'm freaking out about the future. All good. I understand. And, you know, we support you too. But uh, anybody who's hustled, hopefully it's paying off. It seems like uh, it's paid off for you. So let's talk about how you uh, ended up in Lorna Shore. They needed a singer. You're a singer. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, there you go. The end. That's the beginning and the end. Just like that, baby. <laughs> no, though, it's um, I've actually known the dudes for a little while since uh i mean i don't know anybody that's listening to this or if you know anything about like my previous bands like i was in awake in providence i was with a band called euclid but like when i was in awake in providence we did a little weekender which is kind of funny that now we're doing another weekender that's coming up but it's like it's the full circle kind of thing but maybe the first thing that we did was awake in providence weekender with shadow not shadow um in depths and tides uh, amazing bunch of dudes by the way. absolutely fantastic that was when ben was still in the band so it was like ben lorna and awaken providence and it was just like honestly it was insane and some of the best times during the during that uh, little weekender but i knew them from that like that time and then since then we i kind of kept in touch with austin like he always did photography stuff so i was like oh dude like come through take some photos of the band while we're playing a show or whatever and He's always, Austin's always the best. I don't know if you know anything about Austin, but he is absolutely the boy. Love that guy. It's to death. And um, basically, like, we were just, we were one day, I remember the whole CJ thing happened, and I was in, I was doing my own thing, and I was like, all right, well, I mean, that sucks for them. Like, I hope they're they're good. And I remember everybody was sending in, like, all these videos and stuff of, like, everyone, literally everybody like was doing covers of Lorna to try and get in the band. And I was like, look at all of these people. I was like, there's no way that I'm even going to, I'm not even going to try. I'm not going to do anything because it's impossible. It's, I'm going to be flooded out. Like, And then I don't know, one day uh, fucking Austin hit me up and he was like, Hey dude, like, do you want to like try doing one of our songs? And I was like, all right, whatever. I was like, I mean, if you're asking me to do it, then yeah, I mean, I guess I'll do it, but I don't, you know, I don't want to just be like that guy. I feel like like, I've wasted my time so many times trying to get into bands and the growing in the industry, you know, for just like nothing. So when he said me, he was like, yeah, do you want to do it? I was like, absolutely. I'll put my best foot forward and we'll see what happens. And then it kind of all unfolded from there. You know, it's been a long roller coaster of ups and downs, but they paid off, I think, you know. So here we are. And here you are. And here I and here we are together. What was that? Exactly. Uh, if you just don't mind, what was that timeline like from the time you got into the band, went in to record these new songs, and now are to here talking to me? Is that like during this lockdown? Is this 2021 early? What's what's that look like? It was like 2020, the our worst year ever. We are super stoked. 
you know, you know, COVID's happening, but we're like, it's fine. We're going to, they're going to cancel some shows, but it's whatever. And then they canceled a lot of shows. They canceled all of the shows halfway in. And we were like, okay, time to go home. And we were trying to figure out like, all right, so what's the best, you know, move from here? Do we want to, what do we do? Want to just, do we make some new content? Should we like, am I even in the band? You know, that would be pretty cool to know because at the time, like I'm, I'm, in, I'm in a band called Euclid, which is like a death metal band. And I'm also in a monument, which is like the metal core band. And I'm like, listen, if I'm going to do this, I need to know because I can't just be hopping around these three things. Like I'm going to pick one thing. I want it to be my thing. And they were like, all right, yeah, like let's let's hop in the studio and just start doing some stuff. And then we went to the studio 2020. We've had like, I think it was we we were in, I think in, it was snowing. It was so brutal. It was like literally I remember we were driving through a blizzard one day to get back to our Airbnb. So that we could go, you know, we just got out of the studio or something. And I was like, oh my God. So that's how long ago it was to give you some perspective. Like, and then after that, you know, we like more months went by and we were still getting all the press or whatever releases, or I don't know what they do, you know, how those label people do. But they were doing they're putting together their little magic stuff. And then that's yeah, that's the whole timeline pretty much. And then now we're slowly dropping the music and I'm very excited. Right on the PR does do their magic and I know it was probably under wraps for a hot minute, but I will say I was a fan of yours from uh, awake. And so it seemed like a perfect pairing, like that band and you needing each, you know, coming together and, you know, you're certainly, you know, like it, things are a lot more free now in the music business. It used to be like, you could not be in other bands. You had to be in one band or two bands and you, you the twain could not meet and don't cross the streams like Ghostbusters. But like now, I think it's a little more free if you wanted to have other projects, a solo project, a side project, other bands. You could do it and there's not going to be somebody like mad at you, except maybe management or your friends. Like, so that's kind of cool. You're, exactly. very creative, you're a very creative person, but I like the idea like, yeah, hey, I want to pick one road and stick with that. And this is, a, you know, Lauren Shore put down a lot of excellent shit in the before. So now we got this new music to appreciate and the, the new EP is And I Return to Nothingness, which is very ominous. <laughs> and the music is very ominous, much more so than the past for them too. So what a cool uh, combination of things. Oh, absolutely, man. I think, I, you know, we were coming into the studio, we we're like, I wonder what this is going to sound like, you know, at the end. I didn't know what the hell it was going to sound like. Because again, I never worked with these dudes before. But when it came out, I was like, well, this is, uh, I guess, this is how it is. You know, these guys are fucking amazing. Absolutely amazing. I'm very happy the way it came out. Word, man. And you are too. I'm going to say your performance on this. I want people to hear the rest of it. It's coming out August 13th on Century Media. Plug, plug, plug. But like your vocal <laughs> performance is crushing it, dude. You just kill it. I, I don't know how you do some of these lows and screams. They're crazy. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Now you got to come out to our show. Word up. Four days. Come fly over from California, <laughs> baby. You already I know. Gotta, I'm due back east. It's true. We'll at least cover it. I have some, you know, we have people in the area. So for sure, like New York, Connecticut, Worcester, one of those is going to get covered. So I saw the, oh, middle, oh, sorry, Boston, Middle East upstairs, I think. So that's pretty rad. Uh, but not you, man. Where are you? Uh, well, I'm, I'm oh. hopefully the next leg of the tour. Next, next leg time. Tour. All right, next time. But, but yeah, man, we got, so we got this music and this, this great new EP and, uh, you know, super cool to unpack a lot of cool stuff like the previous style of the band, your previous, you bring in your thing. Uh, you know, it's like death metal, it's like progressive metal, it's like deathcore. There's like a gothy winds of plague shit going on that I love. I was like, oh my God, major vibes. These like, or even like um, the early unearthed stuff where they were like wild all over the place, melodic too. So like, I like all the kind of cool things going on. It definitely took me a couple of listens to kind of take it all in, which I think is going to be really fun for fans. I, I can only hope so. I know it's definitely, there are parts that can be like a lot to digest, but yeah, I mean, I think it's once you do digest it, you're like, oh, this isn't, you know, this is, this is pretty, uh, pretty good. You know, I'm like, well, I can only hope anyway. I, this is me like trying to be optimistic out here for other people, but you know, I digress. Word. A lot of unfortunate kids are going to be hurting their hands and feet trying to play these drums and guitars. <laughs> oh dude absolutely especially feet and i mean if you're a drummer uh, i good yeah. luck that's all i can yeah, say man. he's killer he's so good on that stuff uh 
you know, a lot of people are talented, but like, yeah, I think this is like a big step up for everybody involved and uh, super cool. Like uh, just, did they give you like free reign to come in? You guys created this together. You had like complete autonomy on your parts to come in and do your thing lyrically and vocally. Oh yeah. I came in with a whole bunch of, I came in with a bunch of ideas, but then there was one that really stuck to me the most. And then that was the one that we ended up going down the path with. So couldn't have been any better. I was like, all right. You know, as, as soon as I, I've been in bands before where they're like, okay, you need to go like this, this, and this, and this. It's like, so it's too much. You know what I mean? It's like, I just want to feel comfortable. The more comfortable I am, the better music I can make. I feel so. nice. I, th I think that's a lot of people. And uh, you know, you have to not only, you know, you're, the plan is to, you know, when touring is coming back now, thankfully, hooray, you're going to live with these guys. So you can't just not only make good music together, you got to vibe. It sounds like you had the vibe first and then figured out if you could make the music together beside you being able to cover the old material, which is important whenever a new person comes in. Oh, absolutely. I remember, I'm, I'm not going to lie, the first time that I, like, when I was on that tour, well, I'll keep it really short, when I was on that tour with the fucking Lorna dudes a million years ago, I got in, like, I hated them, dude. I was like, I, I love you guys, but I got into some argument with them, and I was like, oh, I hate these guys. And now, I'm like, I love these guys. These guys are amazing. I'm not even going to get into it. Cause it's such a long story, but I just thought it was so, I think it's so funny now. Like, the, that's the full circle of the whole thing, you know? It's like, oh, that were boys. That's how it happens. So that's how it happens sometimes. You have so it happens sometimes with uh, significant others. You meet and it's like, ew, I don't like you. And then it's like, oh, you know, I kind of love you. Um, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I kind of want to get together. What's up? I thought you hated me. No, I I didn't know you. Not, not that much, you know. Not no. that much. Can get over it now. <laughs> so it's like a little like you know like a little love connection, boop, and uh, yeah, it, ha exactly. it happens. It happens. It happens with with bands. It happens with people, man. You know, it's hard to know. And even touring, you know, is not, it's a weird environment. It's a bubble environment. It doesn't exist in any other job. Hey, temporarily, you're going to work with this new team for just like eight weeks and you might hate them and you might love them, but you're stuck with them. <laughs> it doesn't happen almost in any other situation in the world. Touring is such a weird animal. And then I kind of feel I was worried just for everybody else. Like there are a whole, beside the whole industry being crippled by this whole thing, you know, there are people who don't ever go home. They tour, 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 and they go home very little. And I was like, you know, some people can't sleep eight hours a night and eat an actual healthy meal and not party. Like some people are gonna break <laughs> that are gonna break down from this. Oh yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I, I know it's been, you know, COVID's been hard as hell for a lot of people. I can me myself, you know, but it's also been, I think it could all it could have also been seen as like a lot a good thing at the same time where now everybody can you know, like, like how you're doing, you know, you're putting hundred percent of your effort into one thing. And it's like, you're doing great things. You know, it's like, I imagine, I can only hope that everybody else is doing that same thing, despite all this, you know, like maybe they did come home and they need to go back to partying, but now we're coming back, baby. Right. And hopefully everyone leveled up a little bit in the meantime, you know what I mean? So. I think some people did, you know, they worked on themselves. It's always important. Um, as a person speaking of touring who yells at an electric stick for a living, and metal, especially like, you know, any of these extreme forms of metal are so intimate, right? And little shows and clubs and stuff. Are, are you feeling good about getting back out in front of people? Are you scared? Are you anxious? What, how are you feeling? Honestly, I'm really excited. Like we've been practicing a lot. And, uh, you know, even just the first practice that we went in, I was like, oh, that felt really good. And then I started recording my practices. So I listened back to them and I'm like, all right, you know, you could have done better here. Or, oh, you know, I can see I'm starting to get a little tired over here. And I'm like, okay, you know, I feel very excited. You know, we still got months. We got, not, I mean, not maybe not months, a month, but I'm, I am very excited for this next month. So shows are coming back, baby. Then it tour. Comes. Right and on. And then we're coming to Cali. Word. I'll see you then. Um, I don't know. Maybe not, but, you know, my fingers uh, are crossed here. Well, this is eventually, eventually, eventually. Eventually yeah. it's going to happen. Yeah. For sure, for sure. Um, what's your regimen like for, so you're, you're in like rehearsal mode for tour. Do you practice also on your own or do you wait for the band? And, uh, you know, how do you uh, take care of yourself to, to prepare? Well, I, I actually have a, for, since we have like a, we're doing a bunch of songs. I was actually right before I was in this video, I was waiting for you. I was setting up my little practice setup right now, which is like, you know, we get all the songs. I have a Reaper. I have Reaper, you know, the doll. The best doll. Just saying. Still evaluating. So I digress. Anyway, so I got Reaper. They're great. 
and I would just set up all the songs, all the instrumentals in like one nice row. And then I'll pull out my handy dandy mic, which is, um, you're currently at my studio. We're in my little studio setup. So I got my mic literally right here. Just go, blah, 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 blah. you know, lay it down real quick. And then, you know, I will try and go through all the songs or as long as I can. And then, you know, do it again. Then I'll listen back to it and I'll be like, all right, this is how I would sound if I was recorded for an entire set. You know what I mean? Without anything changing, no dials changing. You compare the beginning and the end. And then when we actually meet up for band practice, it's like, boom, now I'm even more ready because I already did it a hundred times at my house without breaks. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. that's the, I'm still getting it, but it's one of those things where it's like, I know that if I keep pushing for it, it's, that's all I, it's going to get closer to it. So eventually it's like perfect. And that's all I want. So I'm a yeah. perfectionist, low key. I'm so. I like the low key perfections and that's how you get great at things. So you don't want to just be good. Good isn't good enough. You know, you want to be exactly. Great. I'm glad you said that's your studio. I was wondering if this was like your Dexter murder room with the newspapers and the serial, <laughs> serial killer, uh, you know, uh, Sansa Lamb's pit is somewhere. Behind, it's like but some it. Japanese newspaper stuff where we're, we're, uh, we're cultured out here, you know, you nice. know, no big deal. So yeah, this is my, my little studio. The, the fun, the magic is over here. But you're just looking over here, so you can't see right. it. But it's just take my word for it. It's there. There We're you here. go. There you go. Jersey, <laughs> Jersey gets a bad reputation, man. Between like Jersey Shore and the Sopranos, and just in general jokes about Jersey and Jersey life and drivers. Uh, you know, like Jersey's the butt of a lot of jokes, which is unfair because oh. I've had nothing but great times. Every any time I ever went to Jersey, never had oh, a bad 100%. time. Oh, dude, exactly. I'm. I. I mean, yeah. I've been here for too long. But I will say, it's definitely not no Jersey Shore. It's no Jersey Shore. Like, people, <laughs> I feel like us, the Jersey people, we hate how other people see. I was just talking to somebody about this. I just came back from a trip in Colorado, and somebody was, they were, they were talking like, everyone's like, oh, you're from New Jersey? You're from New Jersey? Wow. And, and I'm like, nobody even, nobody has ever said that in New Jersey, ever. Maybe. I mean, I don't know. But I don't know anybody that's ever said it like that and if they do damn but yeah you know. these, these are people that watched a lot of boardwalk empire and uh don't have an actual frame of reference for real life but it's cool um it's and then like yeah so like what was like your you, you know coming up in the scene i know you played a lot of the tri-state area which a lot of people do um what's like does jersey what's going on with jersey for live music i know there's a couple of spots in uh, like newark but other than that i'm not familiar with the club like if there's still like a club scene where bands can play or theaters and stuff dude honestly i'm not even too sure as far as like i know we had we used to have a place called dingbats which everybody knew kind about which was like a it. spot then they got like canceled for their whatever what they did so i'm not <laughs> gonna get into that yeah and then like after that everything else started like just closing especially with covid so like i don't even know what's coming back i hope the championship bar is still there i mean that would be the place i was thinking of and uh dingbats has actually cleaned up their business and they're still around so i'm i'll give them another chance we actually just covered something there not too long ago so i'm hopeful oh, cool. yeah it seems like they got it under control but i know what i know what i know the story we don't have to go into it but exactly yeah, just, I'm not, no point like back in the day, Jersey had like a phenomenal club and band scene. And uh, and they still always rep incredible bands. They still have great bands, young and new and old, oh, yeah. all together. And so, Philly too. We had the Voltage Lounge in Philly. And then uh, I heard that one closed also, which is uh, just like, dude, the most heartbreaking. I'm like, I remember playing the wildest show I've ever played in Awake in Providence it was in my first show ever in Awaken Providence at the Voltage Lounge. I remember people like literally jumping off the wall, doing like some ninja stuff because Philly, they're just crazy. These Philly people are like, great though. I love them 100%. That's, like, that's the energy I need. And now what? Right. I'm hoping it comes back. We'll see. Right on. We're going to go nuts. I think even just to go to the bar and see our friends and, uh, just, just, or if the bar is not your thing, just to go hang out somewhere, we're going to all bug out. Once, once everything's cool yep be safe do it be, be smart and be safe but i think people are going to rage very hard at shows they're going to go extra hard i hope they're going to buy all the merch i'm going to hug everyone that will let me hug them and uh whether you know not against their will but you know with permission and consent but, <laughs> oh, um, yeah. 
you know, I, and also just like, you know, like a lot of band, you guys have an EP coming out and, you know, Century does a great job with merch and, and stuff. You make your money selling merch, selling a t-shirt to a kid over a table or signing a vinyl for someone. And, uh, you know, like I said, this music, extreme music is very personal. It's not separated by an arena, usually, unless you're Metallica. So, you know, it's very intimate and, and it's a one-to-one. -one. And, and that's real. That's real. It's how I feel about it. It's not like you're so separated. It's like exactly what you're saying. You feel that connection where it's like, this is a real person, you know? And I think, uh, you know, that's kind of what keeps us all together. It's like that community of people just like, that's why like you can walk around and just hug everybody. And everyone's like, fuck yeah, dude. Like, this is sick. This, you know, I don't know any community like that except for like ravers, but they're on drugs, literally raving. So I really... Can we be honest? Let's be honest. Like I would do if I was on drugs, I would just hug everybody. And fine. I would just hug everybody anyway, you know, but it's like, it's, we have this community where we can just be ourselves. And, uh, and I think that's amazing. Red radical. Um, yeah, man, just as we wind this down, uh, what other stuff have you been doing besides getting ready for this tour and doing vocals? Are you, what do you do to keep yourself sharp? Any entertainment or personal stuff you work on? I got a, uh, I got a van which is pretty cool pretty it sounds lame but i just start, i started like about a year ago like converting it into a conversion van for road trips so literally yesterday i just pulled back in from colorado it was like the longest 40 24 hour drive you know like but i've been like I, that's what i've been doing that's been my baby i've been decking her out i got some nice fake leave foliage going on you know i feel this is as hip as i've ever been man i'm telling you but i feel really good i'm like it's nice since it's summer out time you know summertime time to go out and like enjoy it you know go camping and stuff so we'll Work. see that's what i'm that's what i've been working on nature's good for you and then you go back to the city life but i like nature exactly yeah exactly. it's good it kind of heals you a little heals you a little bit especially if you've been like a an east coasters man we are full of like you know dudes just explode sometimes and you don't know why you just like why did what happened and it's like we're we're pent up with a lot of shit so oh yeah literally so i'm i'm, I'm i was happy to go on my trip but you know that's now i'm back and uh, hopefully now i can fix up my van some more to go somewhere else maybe like maine or something fingers crossed maine is, is dope thinking let me let me give you some main intel. You want to go to Mount Desert Island in Bar Harbor and camp there. They have an RV hookup. They have campgrounds. They have places with showers and food and general stores. Maine is incredible. I've heard that. I heard Maine is like the East Coast, Oregon or something yes. like that, like California style. And I love yeah. California. It's like without the mountains, but everything else is there. Yeah. Jersey is the garden state. Maine is called vacation land on their license plates because it literally is vacation land and you don't have to go far you don't have to go way up into the sticks with no cell reception bar harbor it's like not as fancy you know maine has like sort of very some very fanciful places like ogunquit is for like you know antiquers and boomer energy right. so you don't want that you want to go to like where you know you want to re relax they have a beach they have a mountain range they have camping go there i'm ready for that man i'm writing it down Word. I can text you. <laughs> I was about to say, or text. I just text it to you. Bed, but that's even better. Yeah, I got you, man. I got you. Yo, Will, it's been so good to catch up with you, man. And I return to nothingness, which is crazy sounding, is coming out August 13th on Century <laughs> Media Records. I'm so happy for you to be in this band. I'm happy for the band. And uh, yeah, man, we'll get, get yourselves out on the road. Be safe out there. And uh, we'll see you out west soon. Thank you so much, dude. Thank you for having me on your show.